What's up you guys? Welcome to the vlog. I wanted to go ahead and put this part before the actual video because I wanted to thank each and every one of you guys that went over to the Crash Test channel and actually subscribed to it. It was phenomenal. We got like 15,000 subscribers in like 16 hours. That's almost a thousand subscribers an hour. That's awesome. I want to thank you guys very much. We're going to work on the BMW. We're going to kick some major Let's get to it. It's a beautiful shiny day. The only thing is it's a little chilly. I had to put on the winter hat, but the chilliness isn't gonna stop me from doing a little bit of work. There are currently two holdups with the BMW. One being the tire. You guys saw my burnout video where I burned out and then this thing remained to stay pumped up for a few days. We got rain and 24 hours after we got the rain, I came outside and saw the tire like this. So we're definitely gonna have to do something about that. Well, what the heck's the second thing? Now I'm very excited to show you the second thing. It makes the car look much better. It's finally got a hood. Granted, it's not the same color, but at least it's better than, well, that. I was only able to put this on because my girlfriend and my sister helped me. We had girl power, we got it done. It lines up pretty good. This hood did come damaged as well. As you can see, this, this edge is folded over, but that corner screwed up. This corner is bent. So I told the shop where I got it from about it. They gave me a break, which is good. I, I found that to be very fair. So we got some money deducted off of it. I said it didn't have to be too pretty. So if you just give me a little bit of my money back, I'd be more than happy. And I'm sure that made them extremely happy to hear that. Because I don't think you can really sell a used new hood. Because when it goes to like a body shop, they're gonna pay a lot of money to fix that up. That's probably $75 to fix. That's probably $75 to fix. I'm sure this corner's got a little bit of wear. And I'm sure this corner has a little bit of wear. So little imperfections like that really add up when it comes to paying the bill. Then you had tax on top of that. You guys know, I, I've been there, done that. I explained that in other videos. But today, we are going to secure the hood down so that it does not fly up like that because there's nothing holding it down. The guy who had this before me just stripped that part out. There is no latch in there. So I bought something to fix that. Bonnet pins. We're gonna install these today. Now this hood is just primed and I've tested the primer and it's pretty good. So I think I'm just gonna rock the primer for a little bit because if I do something stupid in this vehicle and I, and I damage the hood or anything, I don't want paint money to be wasted and I don't wanna paint it myself. Plus I can't paint it myself, it's getting too cold. I'd be satisfied if we just got the hood pins installed. I would like to make it extremely clear before I start this that I actually did a little bit of research before doing this because I've never done something like this. I wanna give credit to Mighty Car Mods. I watched their video and I'm going to do it the exact same way they did it because they made it extremely clear. They did a very good job making their video and I wanna give credit where credit's due. Now I could have bought a system that actually locked. This system does not lock. All, how it works is you push this button and then you pull up on this and then your pins go through here. I didn't buy the locking ones because that's an extra key I have to carry around. I don't like carrying around keys. And plus, if somebody wants to f with your car, they're gonna f with your car. So let's get to it. I didn't buy the hood openers. All we need is something like this broken axe handle and a little bit of creativity. So that axe handle just saved me 20 bucks. So now I have to figure out where I want to put this pin. Once I find the location of the pin, then we can mark it, drill it out, and start putting in our actual clips. I think I'm going to use this existing hole. I just have to bore it out because the pin diameter is a little wider than this one. So we'll get the drill out and we'll start drilling it up. Jerk. This is the largest bit I have in that drill bit case. We'll see if it works. Of course the battery just dies on me. Take two. I put the other battery on charge. This one just came off the charger. Freshly charged, energized, yeah! Too small, way too small. Now 
This drill bit kit is much more extensive. I don't want to overbore the hole. That would be the size drill if I wanted to thread that. I guess tapping would be the proper term. There we go. This bracket is blocking the hole that I used on the other side. So we have to remove this. I hope that we can get it off. One tool is not enough. We gotta go grab a second tool. I'm actually gonna cut my hood pins in half. These are way too long and they're just getting in the way. That's why engineers came up with this tool. Little grinding wheels kind of irritate me sometimes. So then I break them. You guys are probably used to seeing me grind something on the vise and then it always sparking. Well this didn't spark because this piece is aluminum. And you guys know how I feel about aluminum and steel and the differences in metals. So this time we're going to test it. Usually when there's steel on aluminum or aluminum on steel, I try to put stainless steel, nylon washer, something to keep the aluminum off the steel and the steel off the aluminum. Because what happens is the two dissimilar metals speed up the oxidation and like the rust process between the two. I think that made sense. You can cut a bolt like this without having any issue as long as you as long as you have a nut on it so that you can thread it off and what the nut acts as is a die there's a burr on the end of this and this nut will take that burr right out it'll unscrew like nothing and then you can put it back on like nothing so when you cut a bolt in half always keep the nut on saves time save on, saves energy and prevents you from flipping out as well I believe I have the hood pins where I want them. Now is when things get fresh. Minty fresh. That's because we're busting out the toothpaste. It's got my name right on it. Drop the hood on it. Drill some holes. So what that toothpaste did was put that toothpaste mark up there and that mark right there. Now I'll take my punch and a hammer, make an indent so that my drill bit doesn't walk. What that means is if I put this drill bit on a curved surface and I hit the trigger, it's gonna walk. With an indent, it doesn't walk, it just stays right there. I got my holes drilled. I have to say, this is the best smelling project I've ever had. No project has ever smelled better. Man, that toothpaste smells phenomenal. Absolutely delicious. I'm really kinda in the mood for some gum now. And I don't even like gum. I think the tarp was an excellent call just due to the fact that my air filter is right where the tarp was. Okay, the toothpaste worked pretty good on this one. The thread diameter is actually smaller than the pin diameter or width. So that one's just gotta be bored out. This one on the other hand is just way off. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because there's going to be a big chunk being cut out soon. The only thing is, is now it screws up my centering point. I got my first clip drawn out. I think this is where I want it. I want to thank the machine freak that sent me this. I used this. How I have it set up is this. The center of this is parallel with this line, which will give it a good look and a good flow, I think. Now you just got to bust out the tool that'll cut this. My Dremel pooped the bed. 
I gotta go get one to finish this project. Getting colder every day. Just a little bit more of a struggle every day. I honestly just came here for a Dremel, but I might actually pick up some more things. I think I'm gonna go with the same thing that I had before. I'm looking for garage door stuff because I don't like the way my garage door closes, but I can't seem to find it. Excuse me, where's your garage door stuff? Aisle 45. 45. Yep, couple down that way as soon as you get this where the insulation is. Uh, right across. Oh, thank you. Perfect. I think I only need two of these. Last two. I came here to buy a $90 tool. I ended up spending much more than $90. I ended up spending $190. It's getting cold out. It's time to insulate. It's time to get smart with energy. Best part of owning one of these things is you can close it a little bit and prevent any of the wind from damaging stuff or blowing it out. So I'll rock it about. Uh, well, as much as I can. That's good. How many other people go to the store, look to buy one thing or maybe two things, and then end up buying much more than that? Like two or three times the amount of stuff that you originally go for? I'm guilty of that all the time. I don't know why I buy the stuff I buy sometimes, but I do. Sometimes I have projects in mind. Sometimes I'm just wasting my money. I don't think I'm really wasting my money because I'm, I will eventually use it and I get it at a good price. I, trust me, if you knew me, I don't waste money. But like I said, I want to see who's guilty in the comment section below to go from buying one or two things to a huge shopping spree. I eat, I eat out way too often. Can I have two Upper Juniors and a tap water, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Give me two waters. That's a deal. Make a deal in the Duramax. Yeah. There's a share. <laughs> I'll get behind you, sucker. By the time I get home, it's going to be dark. So unfortunately, we're not going to get this project done today. But that's how a lot of my videos are. You know, we, we set our mind to something, set our focus on something, and then we have a hiccup then it throws off the whole operation. But that's completely okay. I love chaos. I personally love chaos. It's wonderful, it always keeps me on my toes. And I know you guys like to see me go through chaos. See, when life gives me lemons, I make lemonade. I don't squeeze the lemon into my eye and make it painful or make it negative. I take the positive out of it. So seeing how that's how a lot of my videos play out, it's kind of like a journey. My, my videos are just like a journey. And when you go on a road trip, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. You know, if we got these hood pins installed, these hood clips installed, it would have been too easy. It wouldn't have been as entertaining as it has been. So I'm all for the journey. That destination can be super far away. As long as I have fun getting to it, we're gonna have fun getting to it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. If the tool didn't really break down, didn't really sh the bed, we, prop we would have definitely conquered it. We would have destroyed that thing. We would have devoured that thing. Okay, that's a little dark. Maybe, maybe completed, completed the project. I think that's a little bit more subtle. We'll try to make it tomorrow's priority to get that done. I'll see you guys tomorrow. 3D Machines out. Smash that like button. Prove to me you got thumbs. We'll see ya.